Those of us interested in problems associated with living sustainably in arid and semi-arid regions are indebted to and stand on the shoulders of early generations of University of Arizona arid lands researchers, educators, and students who help forge new understandings of what it means to live in what were termed by some as inhospitable land. University of Arizona researchers who, often against great physical odds, traveled throughout Arizona to transmit arid lands knowledge to its citizens. Our arid lands forebearers helped turn the University of Arizona from a glorified high school into an institution of national and international prominence. The Sonoran Desert provided a unique laboratory for University of Arizona faculty to conduct research on both ecological processes and the economics of living in arid lands. In the early days, faculty research was often conducted under quite difficult circumstances. Lack of adequate roads and basic modes of transportation challenged educators and students as they worked to uncover the desert's mysteries. Early arid lands research efforts required physical stamina, passionate commitment, and perseverance. These service and agriculture accomplishments led to, in 1893, University of Arizona Soil and Irrigation System demonstrations showcased at Chicago's World Columbian Exhibition. Preeminent faculty helped grow the UA's good reputation in arid lands research. And after World War II, UA's arid lands programs coalesced. Together with UNESCO and the American Association for the Advancement of Science, interest in arid lands issues provided new opportunities for community leaders. Walking through the University of Arizona campus today, last names of leading arid lands researchers stand on various University of Arizona buildings, Forbes, Douglas, Chance, among others. Yet perhaps not many know much about the people behind the names. Even before Arizona became a state, their drive and vision changed the face of Arizona and the role of the University of Arizona. These researchers left a considerable and lasting arid lands legacy at the U of A, an inheritance that still resonates today. A.E. Douglas was an astronomer who discovered a correlation between tree rings and the sunspot cycle. Douglas founded the discipline of dendrochronology and established astronomical research programs that led to the installation of the Stewart Observatory. Douglas also served as head of the Department of Physics and Astronomy, interim university president, and dean of the College of Arts, Letters, and Sciences. Robert H. Forbes was a chemist at the University of Arizona Agriculture Experiment Station beginning in 1899 and eventually served as head for 18 years. He conducted extensive research on date culture, alfalfa, irrigation systems, and new methods for fighting plant pests and diseases. Forbes held a keen interest in problems of the Southwest and early on promoted research, education, and extension, the land-grant mission. John James Thornbear came to the U of A in 1901. He was an avid botanist who, for 50 years, helped educate Arizona's farmers and cattlemen and conducted studies on improving grazing lands and published extensively in agriculture experiment station bulletins about Arizona plants and grasses. Thornbear became dean of the College of Agriculture, serving from 1922 to 1929. Dr. Homer Leroy Chance was a professor of botany with a national and international reputation for his studies on arid lands, vegetation, and agriculture. He was instrumental in acquiring lands that have become Saguaro National Park. Chance was a prolific writer and photographer, and his work can be viewed in the University of Arizona Library's special collections. Currently poised to tackle the world's grand challenges, the University of Arizona's arid lands research experts continue to explore methods needed to implement sustainable agriculture and natural resource practices in arid and semi-arid countries.